Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at gas transport, the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide around the body, picking up oxygen at the lungs, which we've got here, and dropping it off at the tissues. But at the same time, we're throwing out carbon dioxide at the lungs and picking it up at the tissues. we need to start when we look at gas transport is simply the fact that the circulatory system, the respiratory system and the tissues of the body are intimately related. Gas needs to go back and forth between all of these particular structures. Now, the transport of these gases are occurring in the blood and specifically at the red blood cell as well. So not just the blood plasma, but the red blood cell too. And so what we need to do is we need to draw up a red blood cell. And I think the best place to start is actually at the tissues. What's happening at the tissues? And then we'll look at what's happening at the lungs. So let's draw up a nice big red blood cell. and see what's happening at the tissue. So remember, first of all, we wanna throw oxygen from the blood to the tissues and we wanna pick up carbon dioxide from the tissues and put it into the blood, all right? So first thing is, I think let's start with carbon dioxide. That's, what's we're, that's what we are picking up here at the tissue. So first thing with carbon dioxide is that it can simply be transported in the blood plasma itself, not even with the red blood cell. That carbon dioxide can go straight into the plasma and just be dissolved directly in the plasma. So the carbon dioxide can be dissolved directly in the plasma. Second thing is that the carbon dioxide can go into the plasma, but it can bind with water in the plasma. Now, if carbon dioxide binds with water in the plasma, it's a simple maths equation. What we get is H2, because there's the 2H, C, there's the C, O, and how many do we have? Two there, one there, so that's three. And that's called carbonic acid. So carbon dioxide binds with water, producing carbonic acid in the plasma. But as we know, carbonic acid hates itself, splits itself apart, and what it forms is bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. Now what happens is the hydrogen ions will bind to plasma proteins to buffer out the hydrogen ions because we know that all pH is, is the amount of hydrogen ions. If there's too many of these free floating in the blood, for example, it's gonna be too acidic, not good for our body. It needs to be buffered out, right? And so if it's in the plasma, proteins can do this. So there's two ways that carbon dioxide can be transported. This equation can happen inside the red blood cell as well. Now here's the thing, when it happens outside the red blood cell, it's actually a very slow reaction. Now the reason why it's a slow reaction is because there's no enzymes out here to help speed it up. But if this reaction happens inside the red blood cell, for example, so CO2 moves into the red blood cell, it binds with water, it produces carbonic acid, which is H2CO3, which then splits itself apart into bicarbonate, HCO3 negative. Let's swap it around just to make it easier and I'll show you why in a sec. Hydrogen ions and bicarbonate. So it's the same thing, doesn't matter which way that you write it. What we now have is the whole reaction happening in the red blood cell, but it's fast. Now, it's fast because there's an enzyme that helps this called carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase. And it speeds this reaction up. In actual fact, this is the most abundant way, or this is the main way that carbon dioxide is actually transported in the red blood cell by turning into bicarbonate. So you can see, where is that CO2? It's sitting here in the bicarbonate. So you could say that carbon dioxide is transported as bicarbonate. So dissolved in plasma and as bicarbonate. But there's another way, carbon dioxide, when it gets into the red blood cell, can actually just bind straight to hemoglobin, which we can write as Hb, like that. And what we have is carbaminohemoglobin, that's what it's called. So there's Hb, CO2. Like I said, it's called carbamino, maybe we'll write that down. No, we'll leave it, yeah, we'll write it down here. Carb, 
amino hemoglobin. Now, the reason why it's called that is because the carbon dioxide doesn't bind to the heme portion, like oxygen does, we'll see in a sec. It binds to the amino acid portion, the globin portion. That's why it's called carb for carbon dioxide, amino hemoglobin. All right? Okay, next thing is what's happening with oxygen? So this is, even though there's four ways here, in actual fact, there's only three particular ways. One, dissolved in plasma. Two, transported as bicarbonate, either outside the cell, slow, or inside the cell, fast. Number three is bound to hemoglobin, specifically the globin portion. What about oxygen? Well, we know that oxygen is going to be in the red blood cell and we need to get it out to the tissues. So what we've got, for example, is we've got oxygen bound to hemoglobin. Right? This oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. But what we need to do is we need to disassociate that oxygen from the hemoglobin. And so we need to give up that hemoglobin and we need to give up that oxygen. And what we now can do is get that oxygen out and send it to the tissues. So that's one way that, uh, that oxygen, is, oxygen is transported, bound to hemoglobin. The other way is oxygen can simply, like carbon dioxide, be dissolved in the plasma. Dissolved in plasma. And it just diffuses out. So there's only two ways. So there's three ways for carbon dioxide to be transported, only two ways for oxygen to be transported. Now an important point here. What tells the oxygen to disassociate from the hemoglobin? How does it know it's at the tissues and it's time to jump off and deliver itself to the tissues? Well, this hydrogen ion. What happens is that this hydrogen ion will force the hemoglobin to disassociate from the oxygen because what the hydrogen ion wants to do is it wants to bind to the hemoglobin to form a deoxyhemoglobin. And the reason why this is important because again, hydrogen ion needs to be buffered. You can't just have free floating hydrogen ion or at least not too much, it needs to be buffered. So the hemoglobin can do this outside the cell, plasma proteins can do it inside the cell, hemoglobin can do it, really important. Another important point here is that the bicarbonate isn't just floating in the red blood cell. That bicarbonate needs to get out. This bicarbonate can stay out in the plasma, but this also needs to get out into the plasma. So what happens is this bicarbonate needs to come across a transport channel in the red blood cell, and it will be transported out into the plasma, and it will be exchanged with chloride. So you get a shift of chloride into the cell, and this is called the chloride shift. So what you can see is this is how carbon dioxide jumps from the tissues into the red blood cell or the plasma for transport, and how the oxygen goes in the opposite direction. Now, this whole process just happens in reverse when we get to the lungs. And so, for example, what we can do is draw up another red blood cell, And we can have a look. So let's start with carbon dioxide again. The carbon dioxide that's just dissolved in the plasma needs to get out to the lungs so we can breathe it out. So it just diffuses out. Easy peasy. What about the carbon dioxide that's stored or transported, I should say, as bicarbonate? Well, what happens here is that the hydrogen ions will bind to the bicarbonate. That will form carbonic acid, H2CO3. That then will disassociate into carbon dioxide and water. And then the carbon dioxide will diffuse out across the lung tissue at the alveoli. What about inside the cell? Same thing that's happening inside the cell, but remember, the bicarbonate is sitting outside the cell, so we need to do that chloride shift in the opposite direction. So we need to get the bicarbonate that's sitting outside the cell now, and we need to swap it and throw it inside the cell, HCO3 negative, swap it with that chloride. Now this bicarbonate combined with the hydrogen ion, it can form H2CO3 carbonic acid, that can then split itself apart into water and carbon dioxide. 
and then that carbon dioxide can diffuse out. And again, carbonic anhydrase can help with this process. And again, it is fast. So this is a fast way of doing it, and this is the slow way of doing it. In saying that, because it's fast, more of carbon dioxide can be transported in this way compared to the way it's transported outside of the cell. Okay, now that's the carbon dioxide, but remember we've also got carbon dioxide bound to hemoglobin as well. So we've got the hemoglobin bound to carbon dioxide, that needs to split itself apart. So we've got deoxyhemoglobin and carbon dioxide, and then we'll chuck that carbon dioxide out. Now what about the oxygen? Well, I said to you earlier that oxygen can be transported, dissolved outside, or that carbon dioxide can jump in, uh, oxygen, sorry, oxygen, can jump in and bind to hemoglobin. Now, this is the thing. There's free hemoglobin because the carbon dioxide's going out. There's also free hemoglobin because the hydrogen that we got here is now reversibly, remember it was bound to hemoglobin. And that hydrogen jumped off. Now we've got free hemoglobin and this is the hemoglobin that the oxygen can use to bind to. And now we've got oxygen bound to hemoglobin. So, take home message. Carbon dioxide is transported three ways. Let's write this down, really important. Carbon dioxide can be transported three ways. One, it can be dissolved. And this is around about 10% of carbon dioxide is dissolved and transported this way. Number two, it can be bound to hemoglobin. What you'll find is this is around about 20% of carbon dioxide is transported that way. And number three is that carbon dioxide can be transported as HCO3 negative, which is bicarbonate, and this is by far the most abundant way, and that's 70%. Now let's compare this to oxygen, right? So I'll just get rid of this for a second. Let's now compare this to oxygen, which I said can only be transported two ways. One, dissolved. Two, bound to hemoglobin. Now what you're going to find is this. Bound to hemoglobin, it's around about 98%, even more. So for example, you could say, bound to hemoglobin, it's transported around about 98, 99%, and dissolved around about 1 to 2%. Now you may think, if only 1 to 2% of oxygen is dissolved, but 10% of carbon dioxide is dissolved, why? Shouldn't it be comparable? No, carbon dioxide is easier to dissolve. So it's easier to pass through barriers and dissolve in fluid, specifically in blood plasma. So this is important. This is the main process of gas transport around the body. Thank you.